Okay, now let me explain you how exactly the mixed micelle which has got all these digested uh, lipid molecules, how it will be absorbed into the enterocyte. So for the absorption, so we have this absorption usually will be going on over the brush border epithelium of jejunal. So jejunal epithelium or jejunum which has got a brush border there. So thing here is, so we have a water layer coating this brush border here because it is there in the lumen. So lumen of the intestine has got water. So the water layer here, it is coating the brush border epithelium. Now you have your mixed micelle. So I'm drawing mixed micelle here. So with the bile acids and bile salt coating here. So all these dots that I'm writing here, consider they are bile acids and bile salts. So within this mixed micelle, we have free fatty acids, free fatty acids are present, 2 monoacyl glycerol is present, cholesterol present, lysophospholipid is present and ADEK, vitamin ADEK, all these things are present in the mixed micelle. Got to remember this terminology, mixed micelle, which has got a digested lipid molecules. Now, the bile acid and bile salt, this part, it is going to interact with the water, bile acids interact polar head of bile acid will interact with the water and it's going to take away the in interference of water so the water layer is taken out because it's going to interact with that once the water layer is taken out so the simple lipids like free fatty acids they will undergo simple diffusion process free fat fatty acids will undergo simple diffusion and your two monocell glycerol get in and your lysophospholipid will be absorbed and of course the cholesterol it needs a transporter so there will be a transporter for cholesterol here so cholesterol is absorbed through transporter the name of the transporter so the name of this transporter here it is NPC1L1 that is Nemanpic C1 like 1 transporter so this is what is the Nemanpic C1 like 1 transporter which is allowing cholesterol transport into the cell and that's an active transporter you need ATPs for that okay so out of all these and vitamin ADK so with their specific transport system so they will get in here vitamin ADK all of them are absorbed now out of all these lipids simple lipids that are absorbed here cholesterol absorption is inefficient because only about 55% of this cholesterol is absorbed and rest of the cholesterol is lost in the feces. So it's an ineffective mechanism. Okay. So before I, so and other fatty acids and uh, lysophospholipid, all these things are absorbed here. So I'll write lysophospholipid here. So these are absorbed. Now before I move in, what will happen to all these simple lipids? So let me explain or give you an applied aspect related, the, related with cholesterol uh, transporter here. So there is a drug which we prescribe in hypercholesterolemia patients that is azetimib. So this azetimib drug it has it is going to inhibit NPC1L1 transporter. So thereby it is going to decrease absorb further it decreases absorption of cholesterol from the intestine. So azetimib you need to remember it is going to inhibit NPC1L1 that is the cholesterol transporter uh, molecule there. So once all these lipids are there here in the enterocyte, so they all will go into smooth ER, so smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They all will be getting into smooth endoplasmic reticulum and in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, so your free fatty acid will be activated into fatty acyl coe Each of these free fatty acids will be activated into fatty acyl coe by fatty acyl coe synthetase enzyme and then activated fatty acyl coe it can combine with cholesterol and it will make cholesterol ester that's how you are adding fatty acid activated fatty acyl coe can combine with 2 monoacyl glycerol which i have shown here so 2 monoacyl glycerol so 2 monoacyl glycerol 2 mag here combining with fatty acid so 3 2 fatty acids will come here and that will become triacyl glycerol now the lysophospholipid lysopl isophospholipid it will take up fatty acid and that will become phospholipid so like this re-esterification process is going on in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so free fatty acid activated into fatty acyl coe combining with co cholesterol to become cholesterol ester lysophospholipid combining with fatty acyl coe to make phospholipid 
two monoacyl glycerol combining with two fatty acyl CoA to make triacyl glycerol. So you are re-esterifying it. All the lipids that were there in the intestine, they were like this: triglycerides, cholesterol ester, phospholipid, vitamin A, D, K. They were there like that in the lumen. And then you have broken down, down them into free fatty acid, two monoacyl glycerol, cholesterol, isophospholipid. And once they get into the intestine, you are re-esterifying them back into their original uh, uh, original form. Then what is the necessity of doing this? So the only necessity of why we are breaking tags in the lumen of the intestine and then absorb them and then again remaking them as a tag is to make them to make the absorption process more efficient because triacyl glycerol is a, it's a complex molecule you cannot simply absorb triacyl glycerol just like that so it has to be broken down into free fatty acid and two monoacyl glycerol in the same way cholesterol ester has to be broken down into cholesterol and fatty acid that's how you absorb it that is the only reason why you break it down in the lumen and then you absorb them and then recreate them in the intestine for the transport process. So once you make all these re-esterification process in the smooth ER, you need to now send them out of uh, out of the enterocyte into, uh, into the systemic circulation. How that is done? So for that you need to load it on to some proteins. Why? Because these are lipid molecules, they are not soluble in water, especially triglyceride, cholesterol ester, phospholipid, vitamin A, D, K, not soluble in water. You need to make them soluble in water. How that is done? So for that we need a protein called apolipoprotein B48. Apo B48. Apolipoprotein B48. So this apolipoprotein B48, it is there in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And your lipids are there in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So now we need to bring all these lipids, triglycerides, cholesterol ester, phospholipids and vitamin A, D, E, K, S. Vitamin A, D, E, K, S. All of these need to be brought into the rough endoplasmic reticulum and that is done by a special protein called MTP. MTP that is microsomal transfer protein. So this microsomal transfer protein, it is a connector between SCR smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the RER rough endoplasmic reticulum. Your lipids are there in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Your protein ApoB48 is there in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So lipid from SCR will be loaded on to protein on the RER. At the end of this loading process, you get a molecule called chylomicrons. Chylomicron. So this chylomicron is a lipoprotein molecule. So it has got ApoB48 as a protein coating and inside you have tags, cholesterol ester, phospholipid, vitamin A, D, K there, right? And then this is now ready for secretion. Only thing is chylomicron is a huge molecule, so you cannot secrete that into portal system because portal fenestrations are very small compared to the fenestrations that you are going to find in lymphatics. That is why chylomicrons are secreted into lymphatics, then it will go into thoracic duct and thoracic duct ultimately drains into a heart and from heart it finds its way into systemic circulation. So this is how all the dietary lipids that you have digested in the micelles converted them into mixed micelles. Mixed micelles digested lipids are undergoing simple diffusion majority of them. Some of them will undergo active uh, transport process like cholesterol and then once they are in the enterocyte they are re-esterified back into their original state and then they will be loaded on to ApoB48 in the rough endoplasmic reticulum mediated by MTP and your synthesizing chylomicrons and chylomicrons initially gets into thoracic duct through lymphatics and then it will find its way into systemic circulation. So this is all about uh, digestion and absorption of lipids and one of the points that I forgot to explain to you about in the digestion process is there is a drug called Orlistat. Since I told about azetimibe, which is inhibiting cholesterol transport, so there is another drug called Orlistat. This Orlistat, it is going to inhibit two enzymes and that is gastric lipase, gastric lipase and pancreatic lipase. So Orlistat is an anti-obesity drug, so we are going to use Orlistat to decrease absorption of triacylglycerol from the diet. 
So this can be prescribed in people who are having hypertriacylglycerolemia. So you can use Orlistat in them, inhibit gastric lipase and pancreatic lipase and allow the uh, lipids, dietary lipids to get out of our body through the intestine into the feces. So the excess, presence of excess fat in the feces, we call that as steaturia. So steaturia is an excess, it's a fine, it's a sign where there is excess fat in the stool is found and the steatoria can give rise to how do you find out steatoria so it can be the first stool will have large amount of fat so it is difficult to flush and it will uh, uh, basically it is uh, it will be having a foul smell and all that so that's what that's how you are going to identify steatoria and also of course you can do fecal fat estimation that's one of the gold standard tests that we use to estimate uh, to determine uh, steatoria here okay so some of the cases for state like in which uh, which condition do you find steatoria so anywhere wherever there is a problem with the lipid digestion and absorption process it can be Crohn's disease it can be ulcerative colitis it can be cystic fibrosis where exocrine glands are affected like pancreatic enzymes are not coming in so it can be inflammation of the small intestine which can give rise to decreased absorption all those things can give rise to steatoria and that's all about digestion and absorption of lipids. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Thank you again.